My name is Becky Barnes. My brother is Isaac, and his wife is Jane Barnes, and we make up Honey Run Farm. I farm six acres of produce organically. Isaac is a beekeeper of 75 hives, and Jane, his wife, does soap making and flowers and helps with the, with the hives of bees. I've been raised on a grain farm and I, would, I like to play outside a lot and um, it bothers me to be inside. I actually didn't know anything about produce farming. Didn't really know it was a profession that people did. I didn't really think about produce farming in this way until I met Jane in college. Well, I grew up on a dairy farm and came to Wittenberg and didn't really think I would end up doing anything related to farming. But while I was there, Becky and I were in German class together. One day after class, she said, hey Jane, do you want to go to Germany with me? And I said, okay. It was on our trip to Germany that we both discovered that we were from farm backgrounds and we had a lot in common. From then on, we just always talked about maybe doing something related to farming since that was what we both grew up with and we enjoyed it. When I went to Montana for my graduate degree, Becky came to Montana too, and that's where we kind of saw how it could be possible to have a small farm, just a few acres, grow produce, sell it at farmer's markets and to restaurants, and to actually try to make a living. My background is sort of the same as Becky's. I grew up farming. All through high school, I worked on the farm and then went to Wittenberg and I took geology thinking that that would be a good career path to work something in the environment outside hopefully and I always knew I wanted to do something not necessarily with my hands but working in an environmental context and beekeeping definitely fits that. You know, I'm school teaching now and doing the beekeeping on the side and I do like uh, inspiring kids to get out and learn about the environment and, and anything to do with it, the ecosystem and beekeeping is definitely a part of that. It was kind of our dream to do it together so when we got home from Montana we just dug right in. And so our first year we really weren't trying to make a living, we were just exploring it, seeing if it would work, and we enjoyed it. And so then the second year we just expanded a little bit more, and then this is the third year, and Becky's pretty much doing it full time as her job. The challenge of um, farming around here organically when I don't actually know any other organic firms, hearing the advice of others around here, they, they joke about it a little bit or, you know, just give me a lot of advice that I can't really take since I'm trying to do it chemical free and um, they, they, I think that some people think it's kind of silly, um, but maybe not. I mean, there's definitely people that stop out to the farm that think it's really neat. And she really is out there all day long it's no joke. working Midnight. hard <laughs> picking tomatoes and i think people have no idea what kind of product they're getting for such an affordable price and i can say that because becky's the one doing all the work it's hard for her to say that you know about herself but it's true she really is working extremely hard to make a living and she does it not just because she thinks it's good money she does it because she believes in it and it's mm -hmm. something she enjoys actually before i went to college i thought that everyone out there would praise farmers, you know, for providing food for them. And it wasn't until I got to Dr. Nyberg's class that I realized not everyone likes what farmers are doing um, with animals and conventionally with a lot of sprays and pesticides. So in a sense, that kind of enlightened me and taught us that, you know, we're not from a perfect background. I, I thought I was actually, and that, you know, not everything's so perfect and that you can change the way things are, so. I started in marketing.
markets in the beginning of May, and they'll go through the end of October, and the schedule for markets is Tuesday, Pearl Market, Wednesday, Dublin, Friday, Pearl, and Saturday, two markets, at Clinville and Worthington. And um, that keeps me pretty busy. This market, there's a lot of regulars. Um, this market, it's during people's business lunch hours, so they're, uh, they're really friendly and they're fun to talk to. Um, the other markets, I'm starting to get to know people pretty well, and that's really fun, you know. They'll develop some, some sort of loyalty to you when they know you, and so it's pretty nice, yeah. Oh, well, I think all of her stuff is definitely, you know, it's fresh, and she used minimal chemicals and stuff. I think she grows it as natural as you can, you know. So if you see a few bug things on it, that's good, because it means she hasn't used any chemicals. So I think that's one good thing. Plus, her product's real consistent. She just does a great job. Plus, she's cool to talk to. <laughs> I'm inspired by the customers a lot. I feel like I'm friends with a lot of them now. Some of them get special requests and sometimes I don't have time to pick every single thing in the field but I want them to have that food so bad that even if it's 11 at night I'll go pick those green tomatoes because they want them really bad. So, so yeah, yeah, you know it's nice they want to eat healthy and and I'm just really impressed with how many people come back to your stand every day, you know, religiously to get some sustenance. That's pretty cool. The <laughs> challenges here are that people don't know, you know, what what goes into organic, high quality stuff. Um, they know the price at Walmart, and uh, as far as produce and as far as honey, you know, if you can get it for a buck less, it doesn't matter if it was raised right here by your neighbor, go get it for a buck less. And that's the challenge in this little area. Um, so we have to take our produce and honey up to Columbus. The market will be controlled by the consumer's demands. So if people want to have products that are grown sustainably, then they need to purchase those products and then the money will follow. And Walmart will invest in those products. <laughs> Sadly enough, you know, <laughs> we might have to depend on Walmart to provide us that because the average consumer is getting their stuff there. So, Otherwise, it's just ridiculous. You can't compete with conventional farming here in Pickaway County. It's like, you know, aside from freshness, I just like helping people who are, you know, in and around my community. I'd rather give money to Becky than give it to somebody who's, you know, in California or Peru or, you know, across the ocean. I think it's just like civic mindedness, you know. If it's in your backyard, use it. I think it's kind of cool too. I think it's kind of cool for people to, to eat something that people go out and pick and then they bring in. Two hours later, it's on the menu. Well, I think we all have the dream that this would be profitable enough that we can be comfortable knowing that we can do this and not have to work like 18 hour days to do, make it happen, you know. My challenge has been, it was teaching, do I really want to do this for 30 years, you know? Is the beekeeping going to make it um, to where we can we can make it out a real business that pays all our bills. That's the biggest challenge right now. I remember several times just looking up to the sky in my life and thinking or asking like what am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? That's who we are. We're, we're running a little beekeeping business and that's who Becky is doing the produce and you know it's sort of like we're establishing our soul like that's uh, that's what we're made of now it's we're the beekeepers of Pickway County <laughs> mm -hmm.